Happy Saturday, you sexy bastards. It's uh, time to get back into Grand Prix World. If you if you recall from the last episode, um, we did have a few topics of discussion open, and I've had a quick glance back um, the day before yesterday, I think it was, uh, over the comments that were left. Uh, it seems that we are still kind of in a jury's out situation on replacing Shinji Nakano with someone who brings the big books. I would, uh, I would certainly agree that our sponsor situation at the moment does look quite dire. But um, the problem is, <clears throat> you should try and remember that I'm a perfectionist, and so sometimes I can perhaps inadvertently give the wrong impression that things are not going uh, in a way that means we can survive the upcoming season, which isn't necessarily true. If you look. Our entire sponsorship for last year uh, amounted to uh, 8.2 million, let's call it. Um, we have nothing signed so far, which I know is a reduction of 8.2 million, but if we take a look at the works deal we're about to sign with Ferrari, uh, that alone is worth 11 million. And of course, neither of those figures take into account the money that comes from uh, from Shinji Nakano and Pedro Diniz. So, even if we sign no other sponsors, but we get the Works Ferrari deal, we're already up <laughs> on la- on this season's budget. Um, so things aren't quite as dire as perhaps we, we feared they were. Um, the tyre situation is perhaps a little less optimal. Um, we are trying now to see in the next seven rounds, well, five, uh, six rounds really, <laughs> if we can uh, get Goodyear to offer us a partner deal just so we can save about half a million. Um, And we'll cut the video here for just a moment because you can probably hear I'm still sick and I really need to sneeze something out and it's disgusting. Back in a sec. Sorry about that, even I found that gross and offensive. Um, We've got a full Bing Crosby situation going on outside as well. We're in the middle of a blizzard. So uh, I'm not surprised I'm sick. The Danker deal seems to be going nowhere, although we have cut significantly the staff that are working on it. Um, I should have maybe switched a bit earlier and gone after Patronus, but uh, screw it. Our main priority now is to make sure that that works for our deal is not stolen away from us. After that we'll take um, I would say 20% of those staff and redistribute them on the other deals. We have an emergency tyre option we can take the customer Bridgestone deal, so really it's it's fuel and lubricants that we need to be worrying about at this point. Um, we could take a customer supply from Texaco, but I think we all appreciate the benefit of having a partner deal. I'm leaving people on the Ferrari deal, even though it's only one season, because what we really want is um, fast upgrades. They had no partners this season, and while they've got reasonable research and development spending, there is every possibility that their engine is a bit crap next year, <laughs> or certainly down on power, and we so we want to make sure that we secure some concessions from them that kind of guarantee progress. Castrol have signed with somebody else, so screw those guys, and we'll bring our oh, Texaco, we're dealing with someone else, so I guess that partner deal could be out of the window. Uh, let's bring... Let's bring Danker along for all the good it'll do. What's going on in technology land? We started work on the C-spec chassis. And the car is still in the model build phase. And we have some technology to upgrade. Ah, but instead I built spare parts. That's right, I built spare parts after the video finished. So, we need to make a decision. What are we going to do? We're running cars 4 and 1 as the race cars at the moment. Um, now, somebody asked, and I forget who it was. Somebody asked, why can you have four cars? And if you build a fifth, a car is replaced. And that's a very good question, and something we haven't touched on before. You'll see here we have race 1, 2, and 3. Race 3 obviously is the sort of the T car, 
uh, if you look at old F1, if someone, say, crashed on the uh, parade lap or had a failure or something, they could run and get into the, the T car. Car 4 is the research and development car. So just by having one, um, your testing kind of has a multiplier to it. Um, although to really get benefit out of a research and development car, you need to build a test rig. And the testing rig, <clears throat> you will see, uh, actually, if you look on YouTube, there is a, a video from Williams F1, I think years ago, like we're talking 98, 99, where they sort of let you into the factory and show you how some things work. And they, they demonstrate a test rig. So what they do is they upload um, uh, data from, from each racetrack. And the car is loaded onto the rig. And under every wheel, there's kind of a, a moving surface and what that does is move the suspension in the same way it will move if the car was actually driving the track and that helps with set up you know finding out early if the car's going to be bottoming bottoming out it's um it's kind of an integral part of f1 testing operations actually and it's strange that the game assumes that you could get by without one because i i, I really i really think you would struggle um but yeah, hopefully that clarifies that, I mean, I'm at this stage having four cars from a practical benefit because keeping the three cars in good order is, is difficult and having a, a backup car that could end up being in better condition than a, a crash chassis from, from the race team is a benefit because <clears throat> we can just switch the driver into the least damaged car and make the best of a bad job. The added benefit, of course, is that the limited testing we have run this season has been boosted by having that fourth car there. Um, so hopefully that clarifies that. Um, just a second. Back once again. Okay, so moving onwards and upwards. Uh, it still seems right to have car four and car one uh, be the race, race spec cars. Again, I'm going to get rid of the wear and I'm not going to worry about repairing the damage. Uh, I think I can just about tolerate 1-2%. to um, Have we run testing? Yes, we have, because we've got setup points. Idiot. So, that's car 1. And car 4. Super. Uh, we do have a reliability upgrade ready to deploy next turn. Uh, I'm not going to, I think I already said in the last episode, I'm not going to research technology any further. And instead, our top priority, above all else, above even the, the C-Spec, is going to be the AR2000A. Um, we need to squeeze everything we can out of that design team. Speaking of which, let's make sure they're still fully staffed. They are. Uh, we need to replace Mike Gascoigne after next season. I'm wondering if anyone better is available that we could sort of fire him early. But no, there is not. Uh, this is a good opportunity, actually, to identify who we could go after. So anyone free in 2001. So we have Nick Worth, who's currently a Minardi and has gone backwards, actually. Neil Oatley still uh, is at Ferrari. He's a four. Uh, Rory Byrne from McLaren is a is the only five level five uh, designer out there. Um, that said, it could be that someone like um, Goto goes up to a level four. It could be that Gascoigne gains a level. Um, I think we should be aiming for a level four. Ideally, I think the level five is going to be a little bit out of our budget range. The same goes for the other heads of the department, actually. Um, Stefano Dominicali is the only five five star. Oh no, Ian Phillips as well from Benetton. Um, but he's under contract with Sauber until 2001. Maybe we should go after him because he's going to be cheaper. But again, the key is the threshold. Like 672,000 is not a big deal in terms of salary for Dominicali. However, his. Uh, his commission percentage has crept over 5%, and that's not something that 
that really is going to make a lot of sense for us, given that we have Eva Manzoni who's taking a 0% commission on any deal, so we get the full benefit of the 11 million works Ferrari deal. It also probably explains why the deals are going a little bit slow. Um, I think we can all agree that the important thing is that we either maintain or go forward, ideally go forward, and that means we've got two three stars that we could probably sign on quite good deals because they don't have jobs at the moment. Um, and we could arguably get uh, get Dominicali for less than 6% if we wait till sort of the very end of the season to snap him up because at that point he'll... Or we could even sort of replace Eva at the start of next season, um, terminate her contract early and replace um, when he's going to sign on very favourable terms for us. Let's see what's going on in the world of construction. Um, who's available in 2001? Adrian Newey, but he's well out of our price bracket. Pat Simmons as well. However, Harvey Postlethwaite, who we really wanted, is tied into 2002. But <clears throat> if you look, our assessment was right. He's already gained a point. Um, so it's a real kick in the pants that he hasn't... Sign with us. Uh, John Barnard is available from Jordan, as is Ross Braun. Those guys are expensive. Gustav Brunner, um, the famous Minardi designer who uh, who went to Toyota, he's available in 2002. He's only two star at the moment, so he must have had a bad year. Um, we do have some options, though. And finally, Chief Mechanic. What we really want is Carl Gaden, because uh, Carl Insurer has gone backwards. Nigel Stepney is a little bit too expensive. Um, so we're gonna, we are gonna target Carl Gaden at the very start of next season, and we're gonna try and snap him up in the first round. I think that sounds like a strategy. Uh, if you guys have any input on that strategy, by all means, you know you've got until the start of the next season to to make a, a deal with me on that. Uh, all the departments are running at peak or above peak efficiency, if that makes any sense. <coughs> I think that means then it's time for us to run our home Grand Prix. What we really want is uh, is a good a good run here. We've got a new spec of intermediate tyre that is a significant step forward. Uh, all the sponsor guys are in place. Yeah, it looks good to me. Okay, so we're going to keep them on the same settings. Um, I'm going to set up for brakes, cool temperatures. Um, it's good to follow the kind of organic flow of your setup engineers. You know, they're giving you the hints that you need. And, I mean, all it's saying here is that setting up for overtaking is not necessarily important. Um, you will still get a benefit if we put a bunch of points here. That's still, a, that's still technically a benefit. But, you know, what we really want to do is kind of max out the bars that we can for maximum effect. Um, I'm going to set Nakano up slightly different. Okay, so... We will keep Deniz on the soft compound tyre. They both get the new compound of intermediate and they're both on the second specification Mugen Honda power unit. We've not discovered anything through spying, have we? No. Let's punch it. 17 degrees and dry, that's good news for us because obviously, as I've mentioned before, that helps the power unit. Uh, ninth and tenth. Ninth and tenth. I can accept it. David Coulthard, McLaren Ford takes Paul on a 123.495 ahead of Rubens Barrichello, Ferrari Ford, uh, 123.581. <clears throat> Michael Schumacher Williams Ford takes third, 123.586. We find ourselves again ahead of the Jordan Sauber mix. Um, 
with Nakano out qualifying versus Jordan by a, a almost a tenth. Uh, we are a tenth off the back of Eddie Irvine's Benetton Ford. Uh, sorry, Benetton Mercedes. Uh, anything going on further down the grid? Tyrrell have taken a step forward again. Um, they are now mixing it up with the Saubers and the Jordans. Well, mainly the Saubers. Seems Herbert had a bad run. But elsewhere it's business as usual. Stewart have overtaken Prost, however. And convincingly, that's that's about half a second difference. I don't know if the Prost cars are running with, with damage. Maybe they're not in good condition. And Minardi are going backwards. Panis and Salo are as good as, as near as makes no difference, a second off the back of the Prosts. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're in a fairly good position because we're three seconds a lap uh, faster than the Minardis and two seconds a lap ahead of the Prosts. So, we can't fall too far backwards, but there is, within a second, uh, ninth down to 15th place, so... It is all to play for between us, Tyrrell, Jordan, and Sauber. Uh, heavy rain, 21 degrees, with very strong wind. That might not play to our advantage. <laughs> um, I'm going to two-stop with Deniz and Nakano, so because basically I don't believe the uh, the rain tire is going to last the distance. Who even knows? Um, I'm glad I didn't turn up any any level of aggression, and I do know that the Niz is is competent in the rain. I think the Carno is quite competent in the rain as well, so maybe we do okay. Fingers crossed, guys. Eighth and eleventh. That's not bad. We finished two laps down though, and Schumacher's William Williams Ford lapped everybody, including David Coulthard, who finished second. Um, that's incredible performance. So what have we learned? Um, well, first of all, as everyone who's ever watched F1 will know, Michael Schumacher is astounding in wet weather conditions. So that's obviously, that is included in the game. Uh, but what we've also learned is the Williams is very, very good in wet conditions. Uh, so that means it's a car, it's probably got a very high handling percentage, maybe even the high 90s. It's definitely going to it's going to carry a lot of downforce um it could also be that goodyear have got a superior wet weather tire although looking down the rest of the grid it doesn't necessarily seem that that's the case uh the podium was uh schumacher williams ford uh david coulthard mclaren ford and rubens barrichello ferrari ford with benetton mercedes of eddie irvine taking fourth ford power still seems to be king of the hill Uh, a unknown an unknown issue on Ricardo Rossett's Stewart Mercedes took him out of the race. Esteban Tuero's Benetton Mercedes had a clutch issue. Uh, the Sauber of Giancarlo Fisichella, I don't know what engine they're running actually, but that exploded. Damon Hill's Williams Ford had a engine failure as well, and Tyrannosuke Takagi in the uh, Tyrrell Mechachrome had an un as as yet unknown fault with his car as well. Um, that's a sign that those two teams really aren't testing all that much um, and maybe the teams are overstretched. So yeah, very very interesting results. The Stewart's Minardi's and the Prost. And the Minardi, Minardi's got ahead of the Prost's actually, that's well one of the Prost's, that's interesting, but they all finished four laps down. So a very very dominant performance by Schumacher and Williams. Drivers' Championship, Michael Schumacher leads um, fairly convincingly, nine points. Um, not nine points, eleven points. What, whatever, some some number. It's a number. I'm sick. Uh, Hans Auer Frentzen is in second. Two uh, two points behind him is Eddie Irvine on thirty three, and a further two points behind him is Rumens Barrichello. It's fairly tight for second actually. Uh, Coulthard's in that mix as well, and maybe even uh, Johnny Newhouse. In the constructors, uh, we're two points behind Sauber still for that elusive fifth position. 
Uh, we really, really, really want to be able to to snatch that. Jordan could still pinch um, six from us with a single good race. Ferrari lead on 66 points ahead of McLaren on 57 and Williams on 52. Williams really seem to have come alive uh, in the second half of the season, so they must have... I'm guessing they've either received an upgrade um, to their chassis, and I'm guessing they'll be on their C-spec already. Um, it could also be that they are the preferential partner for Ford, and they've got a power unit upgrade that the others haven't. Or maybe they're developing their own specification of engine that works better with their own car. Whatever it is, they're doing something very, very right. And they could still come up the field and they could theoretically um, win the constructors. Although I imagine we'll probably like to see them finish second. Benetton have become a little disappointing of late after they had a strong start to the season. Um, Sauber are ahead of us purely on luck at this stage. Um, we have been consistently outperforming them, and it was really the reliability problems that we had at the start of the season that gave them the points that are sitting them where they are now. It's all to play for, and that's it's interesting because it's all to play for at all levels of the grid, which is very interesting. So, obviously, our main concern now is, have we got that works deal? We have not although we are close, I can taste it. Danka have gone ahead and signed with somebody else. This is incredibly bad news for us. We're going to talk to, to FedEx. Actually, no, we're not. There's not enough time to finish a FedEx deal. We need to go down, down, down. Uh, let's, let's try Canal Plu. At least their logo complements our um, our livery. Um, I'm tempted as well to just take that customer Bridgestone deal. We're making a healthy profit each race, which is at least some good news. But we really, 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 really need to get our great Ferrari are attending races for another team. This could really screw us. This could really screw us. Um, get rid of Danka. Yeah, Texaco are not coming to the races. Um, Goodyear are, however. Who else could we talk to? We don't really have many options. The worst case scenario is we get a partner deal for Ferrari, um, which wouldn't in itself normally be the end of the world, but we really need that 11 million now. Um, we we need, it seems, a stronger team lead in the commercial department because that's our major impediment. Uh, let's take a moment to think strategy. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to press on with... Um, chasing the Ferrari deal, it's too close now to let it go. Whoever's starting to take them to races is possibly around this area at most. We are still ahead and we only need to get one point in there. There's also a chance that they'll supply two teams with a work deal. Uh, I'm no longer concerned necessarily about getting uh, guaranteed upgrades. I don't mind if they go to the other team, but what we need is that 11 million. Even if the engine is subpar, um, we're just going to have to see it as a bridge year. We really need a fuel supplier to come on board. Um, we could talk to uh, Repsol. Lacking in power, but the tolerance is, is pretty reasonable. Um, I don't think Agip is likely to be a good partner for us. I still think Texaco makes sense, but they just don't seem to want to deal with us. They just don't seem to want to deal with us. Petrobras could also be an option. Yeah, I, th I think... I think we have to, to move away from Texaco. And we need to get a partner that's willing to talk to us. Um...
Do you know what? I know they hate us, but it seems like their formula for next season is looking is looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Um, can I reclaim any stuff? No, not really. Okay, let's get Esso on board. Mugen and Honda are still quite friendly towards us, but they're not going to give us 11 million, so we have to, in the style of ABBA, take a chance on them. Um, still got a full team, no one's quit at least, and the team is still working efficiently, which is the biggest uh, advantage that we're wielding at the moment. Let's head over to the design office. Um, okay. Yeah, progress has slowed on the C spec. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna release a a poor C spec. It will still be a step forward, it just won't be a great step forward. And we're gonna use ten percent of our staff for that because we really want to squeeze ourselves into a position where next year's car has all the points. All of the points. That reliability upgrade is not going to happen. I can tell you that now. What condition are the cars in? 62% wear. That's going to go up when I run testing. And I am running testing because we want the development points. And we've made enough money to make testing make sense. Uh, Fellows can't run because he doesn't have a a car capable of it. So it'll be the, the drivers doing the, the heavy lifting on that testing, which I know they don't like, but they're just going to have to deal. Um, I'll split Nakano 50-50 and him 70-30. That should be enough with 300 miles of testing and a test car to get us full settle points and hopefully full or nearly full development. I'll accept. I'll accept. I think that was still the right thing to do. The cars are now 92% worn in both cases, but we can remove all that wear for the race. So, I mean, the, the biggest the biggest thing I'm happy about now is that we're almost at the stage where we can build five sets of spare parts per round. Uh, the real advantage there is that, <coughs> assuming your cars don't finish the race damaged, you have an excess of one spare part every round, which means you can begin to build up a stock. And having a stock of spare parts is incredibly, incredibly important. Because, you know, as as we saw at the start of this season, you can have an accident that m leaves you with sort of 36% damage on the car. And look, we've got 20% of our staff doing nothing this round. And if we had the extra spare parts available, we could repair... Uh, one of these cars into uh, usable condition. So, round 10 Austria, we're going to finish the model development stage and then we'll have, give it two rounds in the wind tunnel and hopefully that's enough to complete that stage. Next season we'll begin to look, assuming we get this works Ferrari deal, we're going to look at investing in the factory. Until then, I think it's time to set up our cars and make a move. And we really need that Ferrari deal. Badly need that Ferrari deal. Okay, so anyone who remembers the uh, the old A-ring will know that, you know, it's it's a fantastic circuit. It really, really is. But... It's hard to quantify, really. I'm trying to remember the old layout because it's it's not quite like like Spielberg is now. But I I recall it was reasonably power sensitive. Um. So I'm gonna set up Nakano like this. 
and the niz like this. So both cars are quite aero and suspension focused rather than uh, dumping a load into, into power for example. Uh, I'm going to run them both on the harder compound tyre because I think the power deficit here is going to bite us in the in the arse. So we'll do that. Sorry, got a sneeze coming. Okay, um, we've discovered level 2 servo brakes on the Williams. Let's see if we can copy those. Uh, I clicked away before I saw... Yeah, yeah, we've got it. Oh, bollocks. You've just all head desk now because you'll remember that this is an illegal driver aid. Uh, oh, apparently it's no longer illegal. Well, that's fantastic news because that means we can build level 2 servo brakes. <laughs> okay, well, sometimes you do get lucky. Uh, let's, let's race this. First, I'm going to save the game. One sec. I didn't want the randomization to screw us over, you know. Uh, dry 24 degrees. So not our best, but... The Niz still plants it on 8th, which is very interesting. And McLaren seem to have found some pace somewhere. Uh, Johnny Newhouse takes pole for McLaren Ford on a 111.247 ahead of Michael Schumacher, Williams Ford, 111.313. Ahead of David Coulthard, McLaren Ford, uh, 111.329. Harantel Frentzen, Ferrari Ford, 111.366. So they are all near as makes no difference within a second of each other in the top four. Just outside that, Rubens Barrichello, Ferrari Ford, 111.407. It's very, very close. It's very, very close. And the only gap, like the, the first serious gap um, after Johnny Newhouse is between... Uh, Damon Hills, Williams Ford, and our Arrows Honda um, between 7th and 8th. However, let's not forget we are on the slower tyre. And if we assume 2 to 3 tenths on a quali lap, Diniz would technically be behind Johnny Newhouse. Um, this is our best chance for a while for points, so I think... I think we made the right decision in Deniz's setup in focusing on um, on dealing with the the surface of the track, whereas Nakano we um, we dabbled with dealing with changeable wind conditions. Um, both of those are valid strategies for Austria because obviously it's a very picturesque area of the world, but the the weather can be um, uh, fairly changeable. There is going to be uh, wind up there; it can carry stuff onto the track. But it seems the way to go was to deal with um, set the car up for running as close to the uh, the surface of the track as possible, which is always the case. But if you have a bumpier track surface, let's say something like uh, in Buenos Aires, for example, you can't set the car up like that because you're gonna you're gonna damage it. It's gonna mean your driver can't be as aggressive, and it ultimately hits performance. See, I told you we'd get into the advanced setup stuff at some point. Uh, cloudy, 23 degrees, uh, with a bit of wind. So, both of them are going to make a single stop, and we're going to hope that's enough. Uh, Deniz will do a 36-35 split, so Nakano will pit first. I think that makes some sense. I know teams tend to do it the other way around, but I, I think that should allow, I hope, Nakano to make uh, an undercut on drivers making the 36-35 uh, the split, which uh, any others running the hard compound tyre were m probably likely to do. Um, however, the majority of cars, it seems, tend to run on the softer compound for the most part. We've got a podium. We've got a podium. We've taken third. Shinji Nakano comes out of nowhere, puts it on the podium. Um, it seems the change in wind conditions mean his setup started working better for him, and it's a double points finish. 
Uh, David Coulthard, McLaren Ford, 129.09.862. Head of Eddie Irvine, Benetton Mercedes, uh, 129.18.135. Bit of a gap, but still. Shinji Nakano, Arrows, Mugen Honda, 129.27.199. Ahead of Esteban Tueros, Benetton Mercedes, and Michael Schumacher's Williams Ford. The final point goes to Pedders, uh, Arrows, Mugen Honda, 129.40.206. The Jordans were right behind us. So this is what I was talking about. That if we had, um, if we had performance issues or we had a reliability problem, they would have snatched two points paying positions there. Uh, the Tyrrells continued to make progress in the right direction, and there was a lot of attrition in that race. Uh, Johnny Newhouse's McLaren Ford gave up on the old engine front. Um, Suspension and electronic failures for both Ferrari Fords. Uh, the Stuart Mercedes, again, of uh, Andrea Montemini had an engine failure. Uh, Olivier Panis's Minardi Peugeot also had an engine failure. Unknown problems for Damon Hill's Williams Ford. He's had a terrible season. And uh, Johnny Herbert in the Sauber, uh, I think it's Sauber Mercedes, I could be wrong, uh, had hydraulic failure. Unlucky. The Drivers' Championship, uh, Schumacher leads by eight points from Coulthard, who is leading uh, Eddie Irvine in third position. Nakano is joint eighth with uh, Giancarlo Fisichella, and Deniz is sat in 11th, so Shinji Nakano has made a significant leap there. Uh, and that puts us into the coveted fifth position with a cushion of three points. We're never, ever in a million years going to catch Benton. And I think this shows exactly how close it is between those top four, given three of them are running the same engine supply. Uh, although Williams is the only works Ford, uh, and they're actually last. So I think that shows that McLaren and Ferrari have done something very, very smart on the design front. And the resources that they would spend on developing the engine are being better used elsewhere, I imagine, on the tyres. That was an excellent, excellent result for us. Let us hope that that has sealed the Ferrari deal for us, and it has. Guys, I cannot emphasize how important this is. Let's sign that bastard right up. And we have a success card to play. Um, I'm going to reduce Ferrari to 10%. Uh, right, we've got a choice of a customer, a customer deal for Goodyear or a customer deal for Bridgestone, but this door is still open for a partner deal there. Esso again will only offer us a customer deal for f three seasons? You can dick off. Uh, so we have fuel issues, that much is certain. It's a shame because it's a good it's a good blend. Next season. It is a good blend. Mobile will not deal with us. Uh I think our best bet now would be Huh. Who would be the best bet? I think we're looking in the Petrobras Repsol kind of area because Shell and Mobile we won't get a good deal. Uh power or tolerance, power or tolerance. Uh I think we'll go for Petrobras. This will be a very last minute deal if we get it. I'm going to put 25% on there. Whatever happens, we've got a guaranteed customer deal here. Um, but I'm going to put some guys on trying to get us a partner tyre deal. Uh, Canal Plus have signed with somebody else. That's not necessarily in the world for us now that we've got um, a deal in place elsewhere. Telecom Argentina, that three season deal is not going anywhere. Although three seasons would be good at 600,000. So what we need to do now is try and get... Let's try and get PIAA. Then normally there would not be enough time to 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 get this. 
However, we have a success card to play. And... Uh, do we take a customer tile deal for one season? Do we, do we, do we? Let's take a look at the tire specs really quick. <coughs> so, the hard tire from Goodyear is incredible. It's completely full on almost all stats. The soft is not as good. The intermediates are better from Bridgestone, but the full wets seem to be a bit better in terms of grip from Goodyear. I think the better all-round tyre is, is the Bridgestone. Okay, so now we need to make some changes. Bridgestone, Ferrari, because we still want that bonus. And we want PIAA. Hmm. <clears throat> You're probably wondering why I'm why am I not taking petrol brows. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, it wouldn't really have an effect at this point anyway. Um, next round it would start to have an effect, but what we really want to do is take this opportunity to sort of snatch at least one bonus from from Ferrari if we can. Ferrari are now basically underwriting the team. But you'll see that already we, <laughs> we've covered 10% of the car, but we are making more money per round. And we are the preferred partner from Ferrari, which is a, a big coup for us. We do have to select a new engine partner for next season. So that's something that maybe you guys want to consider. Um, I'm always open to your suggestions. I really had hoped to um, to maybe surprise ourselves this season, and, and given how well the first qualify session went, I almost hoped, dared to dream that we could get a fourth place in the constructors. That's not going to happen now, which means finding a team sponsor next season is going to be difficult. That's why I'm negotiating with PIAA now, even though it's not going to, it wouldn't usually work. See, what we have is a we have a success card to play, which is the best. That has the greatest effect um, of them all. The TV time and the hospitality are other sort of advantages that you can use to leverage sponsors. Now, what we could do is we could drop this card on Ferrari. And what we would get in exchange for that is probably all three bonuses. The bonuses for work deals, I believe, are... Fast upgrades, um, control of research and development, and I believe you can get a little bit extra cash. I, th I think. That could just be for partners, though. Um, it's been a while since I've given it this much thought, actually. Um, but all sponsors, even cash sponsors, you can get bonuses for. Um, the best... The best thing you can get, and there's not an, is this, guaranteed. Um, that's the very last thing that we'll fill. So we've now filled this bar, and then we can fill this bar, and each one gives us a new bonus. And then guaranteed means that you are 100% guaranteed to get the entire sum, um, and that the deal is not subject to change uh, in the off season that they will honour their obligations in every single way. Like you can negotiate for fast upgrades, um, but you know there's still uh, there's still a possibility that you won't actually get that many upgrades. Um, having the guaranteed box filled means they will honour all the obligations in their deal, which obviously is incredibly important. I need to cut the video here so I can edit it, upload it, eat some lunch, and record a whole bunch more content for you. We're going to spend the weekend together, so. Um, Hopefully the weather is uh, as bad for you as it is for me, so we can hang out together a while. Uh, it's a pleasure as always talking to you. I'll see you for round 11 shortly. Take care.